I'm Tom Scholey, author of Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics and Fantastic Four Grand Design. And today we're going to look at a comic that I made during the pandemic. It's not available in print, at least not yet, called YZ, The True Story of Young Zeus by Tom Scholey. I had finished my book, Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, just before the pandemic started. In the course of working on that book, I there, there are... You know, more than a few moments in that book where I got to depict Jack Kirby drawing Golden Age comics, Golden Age superhero comics, draw him drawing them and write about him writing about them and draw him writing about them. And it just seemed like he was having so much fun spending all that time depicting Kirby uh, making up whimsical stories made me really want to do some whimsical stories. So I thought, you know, as soon as I'm done this project, I'm going to do some whimsical stories. And then I, like I wanted to do sort of uh, particularly the stuff he did during the golden age. There's just like a sense of freedom about them, a sense of like they can just go anywhere, a sense of adventure. It's like a whimsy and a lightness, but uh, that that doesn't mean that they're um, superficial you know there's also some depth to them uh they, they just kind of move fast and so I, I wanted to make some comics like that and so that's what i spent uh the bulk of of the pandemic doing was making sort of um what i referred to as new golden age comics and i see now uh dc is putting out a line of new golden age comics. I feel like I was I was on the right track, uh, you know, that I was doing new golden age comics, you know, two or three years ago. It just felt like the right time for it. And so uh, one of the ones that I was able to, to sort of complete, to fully complete was Young Zeus. YZ, the true story of Young Zeus by Tom Scholey. And I posted the full PDF on my Patreon. If you subscribe to my Patreon, you'll be able to download that PDF and 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 read the comic at your leisure. It's uh, you know sort of uh, you know fully rendered. Whenever either you know a, a, a an an outside publisher is ready to publish it, uh, or uh, whenever I'm ready to do my first uh, crowdfunded comic, that's when you'll see a print version of Young Zeus. But um, th so this was my attempt to do a golden age superhero story, a new golden age superhero story. Working on um, Jack Kirby, The Epic Life of the King of Comics, and those, um, you know, sort of the comics that he, he did really, really early on, uh, you know, mythological stuff like Mercury, Hurricane, and and, um, and I was thinking about, you know, the, um, the, the sort of caped superhero archetype, like a Superman or like you know, Shazam, you know, Captain Marvel, whatever you want to call him. What those caped superhero archetypes trace back to is they trace back to Flash Gordon. Now, you know, you think of Flash Gordon, you think of a guy in a space suit, but um, there are, you know, sort of a number of episodes where he's running around and jumping around with a cape. And uh, some of those drawings, you know, uh, one of them pretty famously was, you know, copied by Siegel and Schuster when they made... Um, action comics number one and and in in those depictions flash gordon is basically running around uh kind of like superman but uh you know with like the trunks and a cape but then no costume you know the costume was basically just trunks and a cape and then uh you know running around like that and so i i, I wanted to do a sort of caped superhero archetype that that you know goes back to that um original sort of Alex Raymond thing of that's where young Zeus came from and and here's the cover you know I kind of you know streamlined his design came up with this uh YZ design element it's on his belt and then his sandals spell out YZ and then you know I was always fascinated by like the superman spit curl and so when I did satan soldier you know and and how superman's spit curl is you know supposed to be an s and if it's facing backwards if it doesn't make an s then you're drawing superman wrong so uh, that you know he has you know even if you're just looking at his face in a close-up there's a little bit of his sort of trademark there you got the s spit curl and so i was always sort of fascinated with that 
And I like the idea of making a character's hair, you know, somehow reference their name. So American Barbarian with his red, white, and blue hair. So young Zeus, I gave him a, a, a Z-shaped spit curl. And here he is. And and so I, I was sort of, you know, combining, you know, sort of modern Miller-esque compositions and, and storytelling strategies. Um, I, it's strange to kind of refer to these uh, Miller strategies as modern because, I mean, they were extremely popular, you know, 20 some years ago at, at the turn of the century. And then, um, you know, they were sort of created by Miller in the late 70s and early 80s. So it's a little bit odd to call them modern, but but comics is a, a backward looking medium. So, uh, you know, something from 40 years ago and from uh, from 20 some years ago is considered modern. So we sort of have those those modern storytelling techniques combined with uh, golden age um, narrative content. Um, and so we have establishing shot of Mount Olympus and you can almost make out a little tiny figure at the top. And then we go closer and it's young Zeus sitting there. And then we go even closer and we see he's look, he's watching something. He's, he's vigilant. He's a superhero. He's up on his, his perch, uh, you know, watching for trouble. And then he squints to show that he's spotted something. And he jumps down to a uh, Miller-esque lightning flash. And we have the sort of standard superhero setup of a purse snatching, a, a mugging, um, which is, you know, sort of like, you know, w- one of the rituals of superhero comics and superhero movies. And and I don't know that I've done one before this in, in Young Zeus, but again, I'm I'm going for something classical here something that's classical and modern, backward looking and forward looking. Come on, lady, don't make this hard. Thwack, oof, crack. And we see the bullet in sort of uh, slow motion time, uh, sort of, you know, matrix time. But uh, matrix time was trying to replicate the sort of storytelling that, that comes very naturally to comics. So before you know it, young Zeus is there and the bullet bounces right off of him. Pretty much everything I've done since Transformers versus G.I. Joe, the finished line work is pencil to give it sort of a, a soft, a soft modeled curascura to use a big word. He asks her, are you okay? Thanks to you. Okay, hero, beat it. Shield your eyes, ma'am. And then he flings lightning bolts, uh, the, the trademark weapon of Zeus at each of them. What's your name? I'm Zeus. Young Zeus by Tom Scholey. Help! Thank God. We have some miners trapped in a mine, which, uh, you know, was one one of the first Superman stories is about, uh, you know, miners uh, getting trapped in a, in a um, you know, sort of dangerous, poorly run mine. Thank you. Where are you going? He rescues them and then uh, flies to Mine Corp. Hold my calls. Whoa. Why are you taking me to my mine? The conditions of your mine are unsafe. You're putting the miners' lives in danger. You're going to spend the night in this mine and see how you, huh? You know, to spend the, spend the night in his own mine and see how he likes it. And maybe maybe that'll uh, soften his heart and, and he'll see the error of his ways and make things better. It, do, it doesn't go as planned. This isn't his mine. It's mine. All things beneath the earth belong to me. Who are you? Don't you recognize me? Uh, you know, it's kind of fun doing that silhouette, pointy-eared uh, Mephistopheles sort of silhouette. Very operatic. Your own brother? I have a brother? Pluto! I thought you were dead. I thought Father Cronus ate you. He did, but when you killed him, three days later, I crawled out of his belly. You know, so we're sort of establishing this... Uh, superhero universe uh, referencing uh you know greek mythology but but playing very fast and loose with it you know like uh jack kirby's thor even more fast and loose with sort of the um 
you know, the golden age spirit as opposed to the silver age spirit where, where really anything goes. And then a scene change, crack the dam, help. And so then we have sort of another, like the mugging, we have another standard superhero setup, cracked dam, you know, most likely Hoover Dam and the resulting flood. And now the superhero has to come in and save the day. And I, I, I like putting that like sort of deep shadow at the top of um, young Zeus as he's lifting this stone. You hope you can create a character design that's recognizable, even if parts of it are, uh, you know, obscured or in silhouette. And so he throws down one boulder, two boulders, three boulders. Yay. He stopped the flood, uh, sort of a, um, you know, the sort of thing that a Greek God would do like, like one of, uh, you know, Hercules's labors. And so now, uh, you know, we get this upshot of this hero shot of young Zeus, you know, basking in the glory of this, uh, little victory. And then a pair of wet arms grab him and pull him down into the water. And it's his brother, Neptune. So this, this, Comic so far is a family reunion. Why do you thwart me? I love the idea of uh, capes being required f- to be a superhero. That that you got if you're going to be a superhero, you got to have a cape. You don't have to wear it all the time, but you got to have one. You know, it just feels very um, classical. Like I just kind of like that idea because I think like when you're a little kid and you're drawing a superhero, you think of like the superhero that you think of the cape as being almost the source of the powers that that. Um, you know, Superman can fly because he has a cape. So I like the idea of a caped underwater figure where you have the cape kind of, you know, billowing and, and rocking. And it's it's that sort of scalloped cape. These mortals have heaped their poisons upon my kingdom. They must be punished. They must be made to suffer as my kingdom suffers. There are better ways. I'm trying to get to the very, like, most basic, most elemental superhero story that 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 is a satisfying superhero story in itself but also um is sort of having a conversation with the whole history of superhero comics there are better ways spend some time among them and so here's uh, you know one of those big cruise ships one of those obscene cruise ships lead them by your example look at them stuffing their faces as if there is an endless supply of shrimp it's disgusting Look at how they care for their young. You've not convinced me, brother. Ah, so he, he jumps in the water and creates a tidal wave to, to knock over this cruise ship. What have you done? Come back. These people need our help. And so there he is, uh, you know, saving people as they fall out of, the, um, out of the ship. He's swimming and pulling lifeboats with, with his teeth. This is only a fraction of the passengers. I can't save them all. He's going back to save some more. I can help. And so he's got, he's got some help from a, uh, a mermaid, a, uh, a naiad. Even the two of us are not going to be enough. And so she uh, you know, does her sonic song. And here come some dolphins to help out and, and, an octop- uh, and a squid uh, to help get these people to safety as the ship sinks. Thanks. Don't bother trying to convince Neptune. He's stubborn. Now they swim down into the ocean, into the depths. And it's, uh, you know, a little bit like that uh, can you read my mind flying scene in Superman, uh, except, you know, she doesn't need him to fly. And, and their hands inch closer together. Uh, their eyes are locked. And then before there can be a, a connection or, or um, a, a rebuff or a, uh, you know, whale sort of playfully gets between them as, uh, you know, sort of a swirl of a school of fish pass by. Uh, they're separated and, and, and we're not sure what happens. But when the fish, when the fish clear away, she's no longer there. You who, there you are. What a funny thing to say. Really? I, uh, where else would I be, you silly goose? What happened to your hand? Nothing. Oh, I, oh, you must be thinking of my sister, Thetis. I'm your enemy. We get mixed up all the time. It was a pleasure meeting you. Why the rush? So he meets another, uh, you know, mermaid, another sort of half sea creature, half goddess, uh, except this one, it, the, 
the balance of of you know sea creature to goddess is um you know a little bit too much for him at least at this moment and so now he's flying back to the city and now you know the city uh you know there's some kind of earthquake something is making the uh the buildings rock tip over making the um the cars bounce in the air zeus dear boy have you anything to say for yourself i'm sorry father so here's Cronus with the big hole in his stomach after uh, Cronus ate his children. I'm sorry, father. I'm sorry I killed you. You should have done a better job, boy. You have no idea of the power you've brought down on yourself. I mean, I like I like this composition, you know, sort of uh, a shot from down below, looking up at this big hand coming down. And then the hand, uh, young Zeus gets kind of smashed between the fingers and he's, you know, trying to push push his way up and then he, he kind of makes his way up and bam smacks the 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 back of Cronus's hand and then does a thunder punch and then a, a you know punch to the face and then smack and now he's down on the ground titan brothers hear me reveal yourselves one tiny god all alone so i um you know came up with some designs for the other titans and i was sort of reading about the different titans and what their names are and what their properties are and i kind of extrapolated this you know this kind of uh, pantheon of sort of uh you know and that these are you know cronus is the father of the gods so these are earlier you know proto gods they're the titans they're the, they're the um the the race before the gods and and he has brothers too so now it's a, it's a reunion of of Cronus's three sons, young Pluto, young Neptune, and young Zeus. And of course, young Pluto, this this grim uh, gray and black with a pointy collar, you know, they're they're fighting the, the a battle of of gods versus titans. And every everybody gets their moment. Disgusting sons turning against their father, letting my rebellious son lead you astray divide and conquer playing everybody against each other we're not getting anywhere pluto you should use your volcano powers on the water titan neptune use your water spouts on the fire titan so zeus has a plan he's he's uh he's got leadership qualities no it burns and you know the basic you know superhero thing of you know if if things aren't working out maybe you know switch up who who you're fighting maybe uh have the water guy fight the fire guy instead of the water guy fighting the water guy and have the fire guy fight the water guy it's working i'd expect nothing less from the god of wisdom that's right zeus is the god of wisdom pluto my darling child you are lord of the stone and magma of which this world is made sweet neptune you command the raging oceans and all that dwell in the depths Yet you both take orders from this upstart ruler of the skies. Yes, earth gods and sea gods predate sky gods. Sky gods are a um, you know newer development in the in the history of of uh, civilization. Yet you both take orders from this upstart ruler of the skies, literally the king of nothing. He committed the ultimate crime. He murdered his own father. He wants all power for himself, hoarding it within Mount Olympus. Uh, so, I mean, nowadays, you know, sky gods are kind of the only gods we can really conceive of or take seriously. Uh, a, a, a An underground god, an earth god like Pluto or like Krom in, uh, in Conan, uh, you know, or a water god. They just, you know, our society, we just can't relate to that. You think he won't come for your kingdoms next? One who killed his own father without blinking. Father, your lies are desperate and obvious. Your sons stand united. So they have their hands on his shoulders. What? You're listening to him? So the hands aren't on his on the shoulders to uh, you know in a in a show of solidarity like he thinks they're they're there to you know sort of push him down to the ground. They've chained him up. He's our father. We never had a chance to know him. You took him from us. He's chained to a rock and thrown into space by his father Cronus. It's true, I am the emptiness. But there is power in the void, in the space between atoms, in the space between electrons. 
not just the lightning of the skies, but the lightning that binds all things. Um, you know, when I when I made this story, I was um, you know very uh, conscious of the hero's journey, and and you know this is that sort of part of of the hero's journey where um, you, you know you become one with the source. You you sort of tap into uh, you know the power of the universe. This sort and and this idea of Zeus who has this lightning power that he could become sort of this sublime figure of of electricity you know of 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 the void of the space between electrons the space between atoms ba-boom and and he breaks his chains i could stay this way forever join the great cosmic flow never to return so he's sort of going from being a uh, sort of golden age hero into being a uh, sort of late silver age you know kirby cosmic hero like like a silver surfer or uh him you know adam warlock or um you know one of the new gods light ray or something join the great cosmic flow never to return hear me titans of old i cast you into the ground you know he's gotten in touch with you know the 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 great power of of the universe you know the power that's been inside him the whole time stay back Stay back, here's Cronus begging off. To strike your father is an abomination. Then I leave it to my Cyclops army. Now in, in you know the Greek mythology, Zeus, you know, made a made a pact with the Cyclopses uh in his war with the Titans and, and they were a decisive part of it. So so here we have the Cyclops and, and a little visual pun, they're Cyclopses. Uh, you know, kind of like the wheelies in Return to Oz. No! Goodbye, father. And and he gives his father a parting kiss. Boom! We're sorry. We were only doing what our daddy told us. Forgive us, king of heaven. So now they're sort of uh, bowing before his power and, and, and his power as the sky god, as the king of heaven. Return to your kingdoms. But remember, if I need your aid, you will come running or face my wrath. So this is sort of the the establishment of of sort of Zeus as we know him in 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 sort of the bulk of the of the Greek myths, you know, as sort of you know that the the main god, the the one above all, the sky god, the lord of Olympus, and then his his brothers are sort of they have their kingdoms, but their kingdoms are are beneath his, and and they they answer to him. Cosmic lightning, return to your source. Return me to my original form. I am not ready to join the great lightning, but you too will answer when I need you. You are part of a new pantheon, my brothers. Its ranks will grow in the coming years. And now the denouement, Thetis, the uh, sea goddess, gives young Zeus a smooch on the cheek. Hail Zeus! jumps back into the water splash the end this this is you know a nice self-contained story that um sort of you know a very classical superhero story a, a new golden age story but you know also sort of a uh, a semi-modern retelling of of an ancient myth and also an origin story an issue one of a, a comic book series i i could potentially do a hundred issues of this, two hundred, three hundred. Um, so far, I've done, I've done two, and uh, neither one is a direct sequel. Each one is kind of within the Young Zeus universe, but isn't a direct like issue two. Although, you know, if 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 I were to you know put this out in print, I uh, you know probably would follow it up with an issue two. But who knows those? And so those other stories I did, I did a. Um, a retelling of the story of Perseus, uh, with where uh, young Zeus is now old Zeus, telling the story of his son Perseus, and then I did one uh, that's sort of the story of Hercules, you know, another one of Zeus's sons. So, um, you know, this this was this was an exciting uh, comic for me, a fun project to do during the the pandemic. I I hope it sees print one day. Um, you know, I'd really like to hold a copy of it in my hand and, and, you know, have other people, you know, be able to read it. But until then, you can watch this video. You can uh, join my Patreon and download this PDF and, and read it on, you know, your, your digital device of choice. Uh, sometimes I feel like we're moving towards a, a post-paper 
world and and maybe you know this idea of making comics for paper is a um is like a quaint idea i i still enjoy the format so as long as it exists i i hope to uh create things for that format i'm tom Scholey, author of jack kirby the epic life of the king of comics and fantastic four grand design